Leavesden Studios near London have been the home of Harry Potter since Daniel Radcliffe was a ten-year-old boy. These sets have played host to the most successful film franchise in cinematic history. But in a few months' time, director David Yates will shout cut on the final scene of the final film, marking the end of a magical spell in British movie-making history. And more than a few tears will be shed by cast and crew alike. It feels strange to be going home, doesn't it? I'm not going home. Not really. September 29th in the year 2000, on a railway station platform in the north of England, and Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint shoot the closing scene for the first film in the Harry Potter franchise. That was the first day of work for three young actors destined for instant stardom. During the next decade, they became some of the most famous faces in the cinematic world. And as they prepare to shoot their final scenes for the last two Harry Potter films, they will have spent almost half their lives at Hogwarts. It was quite a weird experience. It was I, nothing really kind of prepared me for it. I don't know what what it was going to be like because mm -hmm. obviously we'd never, I'd, I'd never done anything like it before. It was just kind of school plays and stuff, and mm -hmm. to, to actually be on the set was kind of, kind of quite a quite an experience because there's so many people and it was quite overwhelming. But mm -hmm. yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Okay. Um, shut it! And then everyone goes. Vroom. It was very weird. I mean, I'd, I'd done nothing before, so it was kind of... I literally didn't know what action or cut meant or what cameras rolling was or anything, so it was very much in at the deep end. But I think I was just completely in awe with it. I was, I was, you know, nine years old, and I was... Nothing seemed to be anything I could relate to or had seen before. It was amazing. I'll never forget walking through those, those, uh, those amazing doors uh, for the first time, as we have done many times since. Uh. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And I also remember auditioning here. One of the, the crazy things about the audition was that my very, very first audition, when they, when they had thousands of kids in day in, day out, my very first line-up, Emma Watson was standing next to me, and, she was, and she, we, did it, we did it together. And I came back two weeks, and she had been cast. Not a day goes by where I don't you know, marvel at you know, how, how, how fortunate I am to be a part of it. And, yeah, think back to, to those first days where I took it home in an evening and read it in one sitting and fell in love with it but had no idea that, that the books would, would, would sell as well as they had and that I'd be sitting here today talking about the, well, talking about the sixth DVD but uh, you know, making the seventh and eighth films. So, um, no, it's pretty amazing. So rolling forward then to the last day when David Yates shouts cut for the final time, what are the scenes going to be like here, do you think? <sighs> um... You made that very vivid for me, actually, there. That was, that was, that was really nicely put. Um... I don't know, it will be really, really sad. It will be very, very sad to think that I can't come here every day and work with my best friends um, all the time. I mean, I, I spend 90% of my time here laughing every day, and it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be quite a moment, I think, because, I mean, it's been, been my whole kind of childhood, really, um, in this place, and it's, yeah, it's definitely going be, gonna to be quite sad, but I think... I think seven's enough, really. I think I'm ready to kind of move on and kind of get out into the real world and see what it's, see what it's like. It's what we know, it's what we're used to. So it's, it's going to be really surreal, but luckily it's going to always be on the telly, it's always going to be reminded of us, and it's something what I'm so proud of being a part of. And do you foresee a time when the two of you might be auditioning against each other for the same role? I don't think we'll ever audition... It's like it's, I mean, it has, it has cropped up on other the things that we've uh, that we've done, but it's more the fact that if we kind of weigh up between us, completely professionally, who would be better at this part? Because if we both go for the part, then we're kind of cancelling each other out at the same time. So I'd like to think that that won't come up, but mm. I don't know if like a a dream part comes up for both of us, maybe. I think it's a sense of sadness. It's almost, it's like, I think it's even more than, you know, that sense when you finish school. I think mm -hmm. it's even kind of more emotional than that because it's been, been so much more part of our lives than school is. It's kind of, I don't know, it's, yeah, just finishing a whole chapter of your life. It's kind of closing that sort of childhood mm -hmm. stage, I guess. Who's the Half-Blood Prince? Who? That's what it says right here. This book is property of the Half-Blood Prince. Tears will be shed, I'm sure tears will be shed. Tears of joy and tears of, you know, leaving it all behind as well, so... It's a mixture, it's a mixture of emotions. I know we're all very excited to see what's going to happen afterwards and, you know, where we're all going to go, um, as, as, as we all are. But uh, saying that, I think most of us right now are just trying to appreciate the time that we have left um, on this. 
certainly until that fateful cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looks a bit better. It, looks oh, my <laughs> it will be sad, but equally it's very exciting to, to not have to then, if a fantastic script comes in, to not have to say, sorry, I'm not available for another three years, can you wait? No, we can't. Um, so it, it'll, be, it'll be very exciting to be able to go on to other stuff and new opportunities, hopefully. You have no choice. You must not fail. It's over.